So, Mega Everything 101 writes, uh, why do you use a DAC and do I need one? And I thought to myself, ha, that's a question I remember asking once upon a time. And I guarantee all of you have either once upon a time asked that very same question or are asking it now. So I thought this is a good opportunity to explain what a DAC is and demystify it a little bit because it's pretty simply what it does. It's quite complicated if you're the sort of engineers and the people working out the mathematics of how it all works. But if you're the person that just wants to, you know, use one, um, it's pretty simple. So let's start very much at the beginning and explain it. So uh, this is a DAC here. This is a digital to analog converter. This one is an external box, but they don't have to be. You will find one in your phone. You will find one in your TV. You will find one in your DVD, Blu-ray player, CD player, whatever it is that you've got that plays any sort of digital music. Uh, this one, in fact, even says DAC on it. Look, there you go says DAC on it but even if it doesn't say DAC if it is in some way playing whether that's mp3 files or WAV or FLAC or whatever in, in, in a digital domain if it's playing a CD or an SACD or a DVD whatever it is that's digital it's going to have to be converted to analog so that your speakers will be able to resonate and you be able to hear the music so um, what happens is with analog for example if you've got um, these old things or even, uh, you know, sort of these old things. Uh, what you'll find is that if you if you um, sort of zoom in to um, to to a, a, a record, you can actually see the groove. It's like a wiggly line that spirals all the way around to the, in, into the middle, and it, and it's constantly wiggling up and down. It's like it's it's always going, you know, in and out and up and down a bit, and it's it's a constant wiggle. It's 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 one flowing and consistent con continuous wiggle all the way from the start to the finish. There's no breaks, there's no gaps, it's not chopped up into, into bits and bytes. It's one thing that goes all the way around. And when the needle follows that round, it moves with the groove of the record. And, and those small vibrations are then translated into little tiny um, sort of changes in, in, in electrical voltage, which is then picked up with, by the amplifier, which amplifies that signal so it's loud enough the speakers to be able to, to um, play them and you be able to hear the music at the volume that you chose. And if you have the uh, if you have a cassette, um, similar sort of an idea. Um, the uh, but, but it's it's a magnetic thing rather than a uh, rather than a, a sort of physical groove cut into the surface. Uh, but if if you were to uh, be able to see the uh, magnetic tape there with some sort of Superman type uh, vision, you perhaps might be able to detect that. The, as the recording is, is, is laid onto the tape, it changes the magnetic frequency as it goes. And that, um, that changing magnetism, again, when it's read by the playhead, is converted into a, a constantly changing little voltage, which in the same way as the record is then put into your amplifier so that that signal can be boosted so that the sound that comes out of your speakers is loud enough to make the neighbours bang on the wall. Um, with digital music, it's different. Computers can't store an infinitely variable amount of um, sort of fluctuation, either with you know magnetic uh, sort of variation or, or, or with constant variation of a groove, because you'd have to store an infinite little sort of amount of detail in between the, the, the ups and the downs, the oscillations of that sound. Physically can't do it. What computers do is they chop things up into bits and bytes, ones and zeros, basically. So what you get, instead of a constant smooth line, of, of, a, of a record groove, for example, if the if the um, uh, music is digital, you get something that looks more like this. So so broadly, it, it's sort of going up and down. So you can see that would be the sound wave there. But when you when you zoom into it, you can actually see that it's it's quite clearly been sort of chopped up into these into these sort of discrete uh, pieces of information, which is not used to man nor beast nor amplifier. It can't understand what those things are it's just a well this is a value of one and that's a value of zero and there's some things in between it but we really don't know what they are and what the digital to analog converter does is it uses some clever mathematics and it, it works out if if this point here if if that's the first value and that's the second value it figures there must be something in between and works out what the correct trajectory is to get between the two so what the analog the digital analog converter is doing and this is going to look terrible because i'm doing it upside down and in reverse but basically it's taking these these sort of discrete lumps and it's putting back in a <laughs> that's missed it all together but you get the idea um that it, it's turning it back into a smooth line so that is all that the digital to analog converter is doing 
So why do I use a DAC? Because otherwise I wouldn't be able to hear the music. Um, do I need one? Yes. Um, but I think the question is probably, do I need an external one? And that's a different question. As we've discovered, you can quite happily use a DAC that is built into your phone. If you press play on your phone and the music is coming out of your headphones or the music is coming out of the inbuilt speakers, the fact that you can hear it suggests that, or in, implies or, or, or guarantees that there is a DAC inside the phone because otherwise the music wouldn't come out, right? So there is a digital to analog conversion being done. Uh, same with um, same with anything else that's playing digital music. If you can hear it, there is a DAC somewhere in the system. Um, then it, the question is whether or not you should uh, use an external one. And, and the reasons why you might do that is because um, if, you're, uh, if you're making phones, for example, or DVD, CD, Blu-ray players, whatever, you're, you're trying to sort of get everything to a particular price point. And frankly, when you've got lots and lots of components in a thing, you might well think the cheapest one, it will do sound is coming out what more do you want that'll you know let's let's get it out the door let's get some profit margin let's keep the shareholders happy and keep us keep us all employed which is fair enough so one of the reasons that you might want to go to an external DAC is to improve the sound that is coming out of your laptop your phone your cd player your blu-ray player your games console whatever it is that's got digital music in it that needs to be released into the world in an analog form in a better sound quality than was uh, than is uh, than, than you'd get from the the, the onboard DAC so um, th that's it um, so um, that's why I use this this external DAC um, it works great on the laptop top it works great on the phone it works great on anything with a digital output so here's where you can use the DAC on this um, uh, DVD player here for example um, if I want to play CDs on it and I want them to come out and, and bypass the DAC that's in here, however much they bragged about it on the front, um, I think this little one actually sounds nicer. Um, so what I've got to do is plug it into something that says digital out. And you can see there's a couple of options on, on this one. We've got, a, we've got a, a, a coaxial and we've got a optical out. Um, either of those two, um, it, will, it will have sound coming out of it still in the digital domain and then you can use the external DAC. If you're quite happy using the onboard DAC, then you can use um, these uh, analog RCA adapters. And by the very nature that they're analog, you know that by the time it hits the air, if it's, if it's analog, then the digital conversion to analog must have taken, taken place before that, right? So the, the DAC must be in there somewhere. So if you're using something, anything with an, an analog out, whether that's a, you know, a headphone jack, for example, whether that's RCA, whether it's XLR, anything, anything which where it's, it's analog already by the time it gets out means that the conversion must have happened before that stage. And so you can't use another DAC in that point because it's, it's already analog. Um, if you want to use a DAC that's outside of, of, of whatever the box is that's playing the music, um, then you need to have the music coming out in, in, a, in a digital form. So in this case, we've got um, coaxial and, uh, and optical. Um, in the case of my laptop, when I want to run this little, little DAC from, uh, from that, um, I can, th there's no optical out or coaxial on my MacBook, <laughs> but there is USB. And USB will take the music out, music out still in the digital uh, domain. Um, I can then uh, plug this in to, uh, to, to the USB port on the back and let the, the music be converted. Uh, from digital back into analog. Um, so I hope that helps clear some of these things up. Um, it was a brilliant question. And um, yeah, thank you very much for asking it, Mega Everything 101. Um, if anybody else has got any questions that they would like answering uh, and clearing up, uh, please let us know in the comments because I guarantee that you won't be the first or last person to have wondered it. So um, yeah, let's, uh, let, let's, let's shoot these questions down and uh, get, people up, get people some answers demystify some of this stuff anyway thank you very much for watching as always please subscribe thank you very much for all those that already have and uh yep yeah, i'll see you in the next one cheers